Now, if you have your Bible, turn to Exodus chapter 17, will you please? The message today will be on tape number 367. Tape number 367. Turn in your Bible to page um, 91, 91 in your Bible. Now, I have book number two on Bible questions and answers everyone should know. And on page uh, six of this book, you'll have the answers to these questions. This is book number two. Where did God command that the pictures of the people be destroyed? What giant in the Bible had a bedstead over 12 feet long and about six feet wide? Was well, Jesus related to John the Baptist? What prophet of the Lord called for thunder and God gave it? What man's eyes were enlightened when he tasted of some honey? What man in the Bible said there was only a step between him and death? What man played off insane because of fear? How many verses do you find in the Bible? What man in the Bible was brought back from the dead and told the king that he and his sons would be with him on tomorrow? What man stole the hearts of the men of Israel by kissing them? Who said he would take ropes and pull a city into a river? What king in the Bible, his people told him he's worth 10,000 of them? What man killed a lion in a pit while snow was on the ground? What navy sent his ship once every three years and brought it king, apes, and peacocks? These questions you find answered on page six of book number two. If you'd like to have this book, you can write in and send a gift of $2 or more. We'll send it to you. If you'd like to have all five of my books on Bible questions and answers, request the five, send a gift of $10. If you'd like to have a list of our cassette tape, you can write in for a list. We'll send you a list of around 350 or more. We'd like for you to get the list. Might be some selections you'd like to have. Remember, this is a faith ministry I depend upon you that love God to help keep the program on the air. Now, the tape we sent out are $3 each, and what you give is used to help take care of our radio expense. I'm so responsible for this hour on Sunday and paying the bill, and it is a faith ministry, so I look to you that love the Lord to work with me in getting out the gospel. So you pray for me and write to me next week. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. I want to say we deeply appreciate Paul and Fran Strickland providing the platter for us in time of bereavement in our church family. They do such a wonderful job, and we have so many good reports of the fine food they provide on occasion like this. And that's out of the business over there in Danielsville. Paul and Fran's restaurant. Now, you're talking about old-fashioned country eatings. That's where you get it. Good old string beans like my mother used to cook in a big black pot with some good old fat back in there. And I'll tell you, cobbler, peach, apple, uh, chicken, fish, whatnot. I, I've never been in a restaurant where you find the old-fashioned cooking like you find that Paul's and Fran's in Danielsville. A lot of other good restaurants around, but I'm talking about the old country style, kind I grew up on. The old, a lot of people like that. If you've never paid them a visit over there, drop in and see for yourself, and I guarantee you go back. They used to serve some good old chitlins, but they backslid on the chitlins and not serve them this year. Maybe they'll get straightened out and serve them next year. But anyway, I recommend it highly. All right, once you pray for us, Write to us, stand by this home mission work. Hope you found your place in the Bible. I was reading about this preacher up north. He's going to his church evidently in the snow. And kind of elderly fellow and slipped up and fell. A little girl came by and trying to help him up. He said to her, said, honey, said, you, you can't help me up. Said, you're too small and I'm too heavy for you to help up. Oh, yes, yeah, she said, I helped my daddy up three or four times, and he is a lot drunker than you are now. And so she had faith enough to believe she could get him up from there. All right, I hope you found the place in your Bible. Remember that mailing address is Post Office Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603. I'm giving you time to find the place in your Bible. You know, this old drunk up here in... Uh, 
uh, Alaska, you know, that got drunk and called all of the trouble we're having about this oil spill. I contend they ought to send the, the old bird up there and make him clean that mess up. And if it takes 10 years, let him work on it for 10 years. An old drunk like that's cause you had to pay a lot more for gas. That gave the gas company an excuse to raise the prices about 10 cents a gallon. You know the drunks and the beer bellies and the liquor heads and the wine o's and the dope addicts really caused God's people and law-abiding citizens a lot of trouble. Do you know that? They really do. And it's sad, too. And because of that old drunk, now you're having to pay more for your gasoline and things like that. It's just not right, but we have to face it. We're living in an evil, ungodly world. And sometimes it's hard to not think about these things, but it's, it's sad what the, the uh, drunks are causing, the damage you're causing, and the people are killing on the highways, and the heartaches it's bringing to decent families. It's terrible. And it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Mass killing, people killing their families, their children, uh, devil worship, sacrificing human beings, and all that kind of stuff, demonism right out of hell. And it's getting worse all the time. God's people need to get get up and get ready to face it because you got to face it. And it's not going to get any better because the devil is the God of this world system. And he's running this thing and he's got all this evil in the land. He's behind all of this stuff, the drinking, the doping, and, and all the sin that's in the world. The devil's behind it. And he's not going to let up because his time is short. So you might as well get set to make the best of it and move on for God. In Exodus chapter 17, I'm speaking on the subject, Then Came Amalek. Now, this is tape number 367. You can call for it by title or by number. Tape 367, Then Came Amalek. Now, we find in Exodus chapter 17, I won't read the whole chapter, but you ought to start reading uh, sometime today and begin and read the chapter, you find that Moses is leading the Israelites uh, through the wilderness and they begin to murmur and complain, needed some water. And then God fed them manna from heaven for 40 years. God fed them. That manna came right down out of heaven and gathered up and ate it. And it was good. It tastes like wafer with, with flavored with honey. And they ate it for 40 years. God provided for them. He sent them quail from the sea. And then they wanted water, and God gave them water to drink. Moses smote the rock. On our last trip to the Holy Land, we stopped by the place where they say Moses smote that rock, and that's beautiful, clear water coming out of that rock right today. And then we, they smote the rock. Moses did. The water came out. Now, the manna is the type of Jesus. The water is the type of the Holy Spirit. And you must keep that in mind. So after the eating of the manna and after the drinking of the water... Then comes Amalek, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Riffingdom. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there upon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, one on one side, one on the other, other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Then Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book. Rehearsing the ears of the Joshua, if I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nasser. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now keep in mind that after the eating of the manor and after the drinking of the water from the rock, then comes Amalek. Amalek is a type of the flesh. He's the descendant of Esau, one of the grandsons of Esau, a man after the flesh, according to the Bible. And here he comes to attack the nation of Israel. Now the Bible lets us know that he came himself, took the initiative, moved forward, attacked Israel. 
Amalek was the first nation to attack Israel. Now that's not without significance. Israel hadn't fought a battle until this time. And Amalek, the grandson of Esau, leads his people out to attack Israel. And he's the first nation to do it. In Numbers chapter 24 and verse 20, when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Now Amalek came from his place to attack Israel. Now I want to point out something to you here, especially you younger Christians. The first battle you're going to have after you get saved is not necessarily going to be with the devil. Your first battle is going to be with your flesh, with your feelings, with what you think about, your attitude. Now a lot of people when they get saved immediately they begin to wonder uh, if they feel saved. They want a feeling. And the devil tells them you must have a feeling. And they depend upon a feeling. And many times people begin to doubt whether or not they're saved because they look back at the time when they made a profession and say, I didn't have a feeling. Now, nowhere in the Bible did God tell you that whosoever feeleth should be saved. He said, whosoever believeth. Now, salvation is based upon the word of God and your faith in God and not feelings. That must be the fact you're lost. There must be faith in God, and if God wants to give you a feeling after that, then it's up to him. If he doesn't, it's still up to him. You're to believe it anyway. And so Amalek comes along, and he attacks Israel, the first nation to do so. And so when people get saved, they have trouble with the flesh, first of all. It's the flesh that bothers them. It's the old Adamic nature. It gives them trouble. They find out that the old habits they had, they still bother them. And other things that they had before they got saved is still tempting them. And they are having this problem. Now that's Amalek. Amalek is not going to let you rest. He'll trail you until your dying day. Now notice the time element in this attack. It was after the drinking from the rock. Now he didn't bother them until they uh, drank from the rock. Now that rock is a type of Christ. That water is a type of the Spirit of God. And the devil is not going to bother you until you drank from the rock. Or until you eat the manor, or until you accept Christ. After that, here comes Amalek. The devil didn't bother me before I got saved. I went ahead and did what I want to do. And you did too. But after you got saved, here comes Amalek, the flesh, pulling on you, battling against that inner man in you, battling against the Spirit of God. You have a, a constant battle taking place. Now the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, Whereby are given unto you exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. So when you got saved, God came in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. And therefore there's a conflict, there's a battle going on between the flesh and the spirit. And that will continue to do so as long as you're in that body. Now you have a movement today that teaches error. Uh, they tell you you can ha be completely sanctified and annihilate, annihilate the old Adamic nature and never have any more problems. Don't believe a word of that. They'll tell you that, but they're having plenty of problems themselves with the old Adamic nature. And you will too as long as you live. Don't kid yourself. Now Amalek was the first then to attack Israel. And if you go to Romans chapter 7 and read chapter 7, you will find that one of the greatest preachers Devil Eve had a terrible battle with himself. Now your biggest problem is with yourself. It's not necessarily with the church, or the preacher, the deacons, or your husband or your wife. It's with yourself. You have your biggest battle with yourself. That old Adamic nature that you're dragging around. The old man that's hanging on to you. That, that's your battle right there. And Amalek then attacked Israel and Paul... And Romans chapter 7 said, I 32 times, I, 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 I. There you find that uh, personal pronoun uh, 32 times. Paul showing you there that you still have that Adamic nature and you will have as long as you live. He'll never be annihilated. You'll never get to the place where you won't be tempted by the flesh. You'll be tempted as long as you live. Now, you can go to sleep on the job, quit doing anything for God. The devil might let you rest a while. But if you ever raise your head up and do anything for God, here he comes. Amalek comes right along. 
And Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, the Bible tells us. And so after the drinking from the rock, after eating of the manna, after crossing Jordan, Israel was engaged in combat against the giants. They didn't, they didn't face any giants in the wilderness. Uh, but after the crossing of Jordan, which is symbolic of the filling of the Holy Spirit, they faced those giants. Now, when you get filled with God's Spirit, when you completely surrender to God and give up everything of this world for God and begin to serve God, here comes the giants. Now, the giants won't bother you as long as the flesh can take care of you. There's a lot of church members, the devil never bother them, let the flesh handle them. They can't overcome the Adamic nature, let alone face the devil. And the devil doesn't waste his time on them. He just lets the old Adamic nature handle them. Now, they'll take care of them all right. And he knows that. But there's times when he wades in, when he sees they're about to get the victory, do something for God. Now we notice that Israel overcame Amalek, but they had to do it in a way that we too can overcome Amalek, the old flesh. Now let's notice how they did it. The Bible said they upheld Moses' hands, verse 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Now when this army came attacking Israel, then they went to the top of a hill and Moses stood there and took the rod of God in his hand and held that rod up. And as long as he held up the, his hands with that rod in his hand, then Israel prevailed. But when his hands grew heavy and tired, began to let down his hands and the rod of God, then the Amalek prevailed. And then we find that, that her... And Aaron came, and one got on one side and one on the other, and they took Moses' hands and held them up until they won the battle. Now we know her means light, and Aaron is the high priest, so in the, in the light of the, the high priest, our Savior, young the right hand of God, in the light of God's word, will overcome the old flesh. That's the only way to do it. Jesus is our high priest. We yield to the inner man. Through the light of God and the strength of God's spirit, that's the only way you're going to down the old Adamic nature. Bring him under subjection, down him, bear his nose in the sand, and determine to die out daily and serve God. That's the only way it can be done. Because Amalek is going to trail you and trail you and trail you as long as you live on the earth. But he can be defeated, not annihilated, but defeated, defeated. Now Moses' hands were heavy and they held him up and prayed and they overcame. The Bible said, uh, he spake a parable unto them saying that men ought always to pray and to faint not. And verse 13 said he used the edge of the sword. Now while uh, Aaron and Hur was holding up his hand, then Joshua was down in the battle, in the, in the field battling against the enemy with the sword. So while you're praying in the light, Look into your high priest to help you, the Lord Jesus. Then you must remember that the sword of God's spirit is needed to battle the enemy. And the word of God is the sword of God's spirit. So you need the help of the spirit of God. You need prayer. You need the word of God, the sword of God's spirit in order to get the job done. In verse 12, Aaron and her stayed up his hands, one on one side and one on the other. Now, if you notice, our next thought is this. Joshua did not destroy, but discomfited Amalek. Now, when Joshua went down and engaged this army into combat and using the sword and Moses up on the hill and the upholding of his hands and the prayer to God, then the Bible said he discomfited Amalek. He didn't completely destroy him. In verse 13, and Joshua discomfited Amalek. And his people with the edge of the sword. Now the old man will never be annihilated. That is destroyed as long as you're alive on the earth. You got him and you'll drag him around as long as you live. You must remember that and you're going to have a battle with him as long as you live. Now some of you, you know what the flesh said to you this morning? Well, you might as well stay at home and, and just have a lunch ready for us and done already. We'll go on to church and when we get back then... Uh, uh, that will be ready. And, uh, and uh, some of you almost done that. You almost listened to the flesh. Some of you may have. You listened to the flesh. You stayed at home when you ought to be in God's house. 
The preacher had the table set for you to feed you spiritually, but you're more concerned about feeding your own belly than you're feeding your own soul. And so you stayed at home to cook and to eat and to carry you listen uh, to the flesh, the old Adamic nature. And he'll never be annihilated. Some of you said, well, I worked hard last week and I'm tired. I think I'll just go ahead and rest today. Yep. That's what Amalek said for you to do. Just rest. Stay in the bed. Backslide on God. Forget about the house of God and the things of God. And there'll be a few there to take care of the situation. Just sit at home. Some of you sitting out there now, you listen to Amalek. You ought to be in God's house. You know that. But you listen to Amalek. And you're going to pay for it. It's going to cost you certain as the world. The old man is never annihilated. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. Paul said in Romans chapter 7 and verse 23, for I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Now, if you read chapter 7 of Romans and see how many times Paul said, I, 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 what I want to do, I didn't do, and I found myself doing what I didn't want to do, and so forth and so on. Now, you ought to read that. Paul is talking about he had a battle with himself. He had a battle with Paul. Paul's biggest problem was Paul. He, he was having a battle at that particular time. They said he thought when he got saved, he'd be on the mountaintop all the time. No, sir. No, sir. When you get saved and maybe feel with God's spirit, you shout the victory, but you're not going to stay there. Old Amalek is coming after you, and he's going to give you a battle. And he'll give you a battle as long as you live older you Get the more you, trouble you're going to have with that old body of yours. You're going to get full of aches and pains, and you're going to have um, uh, bulges and bifocuses and burnings and whatnot, and, and you're going to have problem with that old body. You're going to have uh, the back ache and the feet ache and the headache, and well, you're just going to have a the older you get, the more that old uh, body is going to give you trouble. We're not getting any younger, parts of it's going to wear out. And cause you trouble, like an old automobile, occasionally this part of the way out, that part of the way out. And so they, the old bodies will give you more trouble the older you get. So don't ever think that you're going to annihilate the body and get, get rid of the body. No, no, not till you get your glorified body. Somebody asked an old man one time, 90 some odd years old, young preacher said, listen, preacher said, would you help me? He said, how old do you have to be before you're not tempted about the things of the world? He said, son, ask somebody older than I am. I don't know. I said, I'm still having the problem I've always had. And you will too. If you live to be 100, you're going to have these problems because you're still in that same old body. Now, notice how Amalek attacks. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 and 18, remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you were come out of Egypt? How he met thee by the way and smote the hand a part of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. Now what is he saying here? He's telling how Amalek attacked. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 and 18. He came around behind the nation of Israel, and he picked out the most feeble ones. He picked out the elderly people. Uh, the people that couldn't uh, keep up and, and straggling along the weaker people. He didn't go around front and really face the real true army. He got behind and faced those that were dragging along behind. In other words, he was facing the weakest part of the army. That's why Amalek attacked him. Now, when you're attacked, you're going to be attacked on your weakest point. You'll be sitting sin. That thing that's eating you up. That thing that bothers you more than any other sin. Oh, you say, preacher, I don't know. Yes, you do. Don't kid yourself. No need to lie to God. You know what your besetting sin is. You know your weakest point. You know where you have the greatest battle. You know what your greatest temptation is. I can sit here and name a dozen and probably uh, some of you uh, want to be guilty of this, one guilty of another. I'm talking about your weakest point. Now, that's exactly where Amalek attacks. Now, before I got saved, you know, I, I uh, maybe would go out and uh, on the dance floor, maybe might uh, uh, take a little drink of a beer, a booze, when I, I didn't have sense enough knowing it better. And uh, but that, that doesn't bother me anymore. That doesn't bother me anymore. That's not my weakness. That's not my weak point. 
Oh, you say, preach, Edward, what is your weak point? That's none of your business. You find out what yours is and pray about that and let me pray about mine. Amen? That's a fair way to do it. Now, you know what it is. You know exactly what it is. I know what mine is. You know what yours is. And that's the thing that Amalek is going to attack you on is your weakest point. He's not going to attack you on your strong point. Well, when I was in the Army in World War II and we was fighting the Germans, they'd try to find a weak point in our lines, and that's where they tried to attack. They didn't come up there where the, uh, where the tanks were, the artillery coming in. They'd hit the weak points if you could find them. And that's exactly what Amalek's going to do to you. He's going to attack you on your weakest point, and he, he knows exactly what it is, and that's he's going to keep pecking away and pecking away and pecking away on that weak point. He's going to try to get you to give in. And if you're not careful, you'll give in right there. Now, some of these other things you did before God saved you, it doesn't bother you anymore. Like me, I used to like to go to a pool room and, and lose some money shooting pool when I didn't know any better. And there, uh, the devil doesn't bother by me anymore about that. No, I wouldn't waste my time in an old pool room knocking them balls around on that table. No, sir. I got something more important than that to do. But the devil doesn't bother me about that. I used to like that. But not anymore. And so there's many things I once loved I care nothing about anymore. But there's always a weak point where the devil comes in and, and tries to gig me or uh, try to attack me, uh, old Amalek, and he'll attack you on your weakest point or points. You may have more than one weak point, and he knows what it is. All right, so we find the Bible tells us then he'll come and attack at those places. Now, what did God say about Amalek? God says in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3, Go now and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suck, and ox and sheep, camel and asses. Now, we find that King Saul was commanded of God to go down and destroy old Amalek. Did he do it? No, sir. God says, destroy Amalek, old King Agag, destroy the cattle, and uh, the animals, the men, women, children, destroy everything. After a while, he comes back. The old prophet Samuel met him and said, uh, Saul, have you uh, destroyed everything, Danny? Yes, I sure have, uh, sir. He said, what is that I hear blatant out there? He said, oh, oh. he said, uh, uh, that's some cattle. We found some nice, healthy cattle down there. We thought we'd bring them back. And... Uh, and sacrifice them. We'll just sacrifice them, you know, and worship God with them. Samuel said, son, what's that thing you got by the nap of the neck? Oh, that's old King Agag. We thought we'd just spare him too. He said, all right, let me tell you. But he said, because you disobeyed God, remember obedience is better than sacrifice. You didn't obey God. You're bringing these sacrifices back. God said, obey me, and don't you bring a thing back. You played around and come dragging these back, and for that reason, you're going to lose your kingdom. That's how important it was to uh, old uh, King Saul in those days. He lost his king, died with his boots on. See, the old old flesh is going to be there, and he, he he's going to be spared. You'll spare part of old Amalek if you're not careful. You'll spare part of that flesh and keep it alive. And God says destroy it and consider it dead, and you'll spare certain things that appeal to the flesh and destroy some of them and kid yourself and say, well, I... I, I give that up for Jesus, did you? What, what, what did you not give up for Jesus? That's the point. And the Bible tells us in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 9, But Saul and the people spay gag, and the best of sheep, and the oxen, and the fatling, and the lambs, and all that were good. And God told us to See, you can't play with your, your flesh. That's uh, uh, that old damning nature. You can't play with it. It's like a rattlesnake. It'll bite you. Uh, you got to kill a rattlesnake or that thing will bite you sooner or later. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 24, And they that of Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and the lust. So you must remember that you got to do that in order to make it. A man one time jumped all over me. I was preaching over in a home in Greenville, South Carolina on Paris Mountain in an a institution there, a sanatorium, where people went there with tuberculosis. And we spoke through a sound system and went down into the wards. And after we were preached, it was my duty and my responsibility to go every Thursday and preach. And that I did. And we'd go down and do personal work. And a man jumped on me and I was adjusting the uh, amplifier. And he said, uh, who are you? I said, uh, I'm Virgil. Said, yeah. Or Baptist. I said, yeah. I'm he said, you Baptist ought to be horsewhipped. 
He said, you preach that you have to sin a little bit every day. And he said, you Baptists preach that you can't live perfect. He is getting red in the face and clenched his hands. And, and I told him what I did preach, what I believe. He said, well, you, you, you Baptists preaching false doctrine. He said, we believe that you don't sin every day. He said, I've been saved to how many years, never committed to sin in all those years. Many of them, up in the teens a number of years. And he'd been living perfect all these years. And to make a long story short, he had a 16-year-old daughter in that sanatorium that heard me preach. I went down and won her to Jesus. And a short time after that, she died and went on to heaven. That was a man that had annihilated the flesh, living perfect, and got rid of Amalek and never won his own daughter to God. She's on the road to hell. And God let me win her. I'm glad he deceived. He's deceived like a lot of people. The Bible says God will utterly destroy Amalek, but in due time. In Exodus chapter 17 and verse 14, and the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for more in a book. Rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, if I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. See, that's coming a time when God is going to destroy Amalek completely. And that's when you get your new body. When you get that glorified body, you say, Goodbye, Amalek. You devil, you've been giving me fits for a long time. I've been dragging this old carcass around all these years since God saved me and it's given me a lot of trouble, but I got a glorified body now. And you won't be bothered with that Adamic nature anymore. But until that time, you must realize that the Adamic nature is there. Only through Jesus can you overcome that Adamic nature. And yielding to the Spirit, you walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. But the moment you let up, you quit going to church, you quit praying, you quit reading your Bible, you quit giving of your tithes and offers, and there you're headed downward again. That gives Amalek a chance to come at you and do what he can to destroy you. But as you yield to Jesus and do what you can for the glory of God, God will help you. We find in the Bible that old man Jacob came to his death's bed, pulled his knees up in the bed to give up the ghost. Joseph came along with his two children. He came along and said, uh, uh, I want to bring my two children before you, Dad. I want you to bless them. And so he brought uh, Manasseh and Ephraim, brought them up to put them in front of his dad, that his dad might bless them. And always customary to bless the elder before the younger. And when uh, the old man lay in the bed just before he died, he, there Joseph brought them two boys up, Ephraim and Manasseh. And there, Joseph, knowing Manasseh was the oldest, he put him on Jacob's right hand. And Ephraim was the younger, he put him on his left hand. And then the old man looked down and saw what had happened. And the old man reached over and put his right hand on Ephraim's head and his left hand on Manasseh's head. Uh, Joseph said, Daddy, you're wrong here. said he tried to take his hands and... And uh, put his left hand on the other head and his right hand on the And uh, Jacob said, no, no, my son. No, no, I know what I'm doing. And there he kept his hands crossed and put his right hand on Ephraim, his left hand on Manasseh, and formed a cross. And the younger became the inheritor of the blessing. And the elder lost out Manasseh. See, it's through the cross. See, the old man's hands was crossed. It's through the cross that you defeat Manasseh and gain Ephraim. It's through the cross that you yield to the Spirit and defeat Amalek. It's through the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that you walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Old Amalek, get rid of him, knock him down, put his nose in the dirt, consider him dead, and die daily. That's what Paul said. Every morning, Paul got up and said, I'm going to die out today. I'm not going to please Amalek today. I'm going to walk in the Spirit. And he died daily. And if you don't walk in the Spirit, you're going to follow Amalek. Stand our feet. Father in heaven, help us today to realize that Amalek is the enemy against our spirituality. And help us to be willing to crucify him, consider him dead, and bring him in subjection. And walk in the Spirit. God help us. Our Father, I pray today that you'll bless this people. Use the message. Warm our hearts and help us to realize we must walk in the Spirit and all defeat Amalek.
I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Deb is going to play for us.